True Crime Tuesday. Today, I'm going to bring to you the story of a series of horrific crimes that shook America to its core. Danny Rowling, also called the Gainesville Ripper, went on the rampage killing young people, unleashing a reign of terror in Florida in 1990. Over the course of three days, Rowling went on a rampage murdering five University Florida students. Let's go back a little. Danny Harold Rowling was born in May 1954 to Claudia and James Rowling in Shreveport, Louisiana. Guys, this is a very unfortunate incident, as Danny's cold-hearted father never liked or wanted children. Danny, who lived an unhappy life, paid the price for his father's deadly ways. Danny was a tortured soul, beaten mercilessly and abused. And as a kid from the age of one, he was abused by his horrendously cruel and horrible father. Danny Rowling, later also known as the Gainesville Ripper, knew only to hate. He grew up seething with hatred, taking revenge on society and passing on the abuse he endured to his hapless victims. The abuse Danny had to deal with at the hands of his cop father, who also abused Danny's mother, only grew worse as Danny grew up. When Kevin, Danny's younger brother, was born in 1955, the abuse increased. Life was unbearable for Danny's mother and the two kids. Guys, would you believe that his monster father beat him up when he was one year old because he wasn't crawling properly? Oh my God! Have a look at the only existing family photo that I could find. The beaten up and abused mother of the two boys, Claudia, tried to escape the toxic marriage, but time and time again, she returns. When Danny failed the third grade due to too many absences due to illness, Claudia suffered a nervous breakdown. This is a very sad story of how abusive men who call themselves fathers destroy the lives of children and break the emotional and physical strength of the women who are unfortunate enough to marry these monsters. Danny's school counselors described him as suffering from an inferiority complex with aggressive tendencies and poor impulse control. This is not surprising, is it? Those aggressive tendencies and poor impulse control would foreshadow Danny's murderous rage later in his life. In a home which was a hell created by his demonic father, did the young kid have a chance of growing up as a normal kid? Oh, I don't think so. By the age of 11, Danny Rowling picked up music to cope with his monstrous father's abuse. He enjoyed playing the guitar and singing hymn-like songs. At this time, his mother Claudia's health was deteriorating rapidly and she was committed to a hospital after she had slit her wrists. Danny was young and desperate and he turned to drugs and alcohol and it led to the inevitable worsening of his already fragile mental state. At 14, Danny's neighbors caught him peeping into their daughter's room. Of course, he got beaten up by his father mercilessly for this as well. Reports say that Danny tried to stay in control and he attended church and struggled to hold down steady work. Just imagine how lonely and miserable Danny would have felt as a young teenager. Danny wanted to serve on the forces. The Navy wouldn't take him, so he joined the Air Force. But joining the military was not a good idea, he, he felt. He eventually had to quit the Air Force after too much drug use. He could not cope at all. 
He is reported to have taken acid more than 100 times. Following his discharge from the military, Danny got married and tried to lead a normal life. However, Danny's inner demons were bothering him and he was in a rage all the time. He began to abuse his wife and she left him after four years of marriage in 1977 when he threatened to kill her. Danny lost control. He turned his disappointment of the separation from his wife into a fit of rage and raped a woman who closely resembled his ex-wife. Later that year, he killed a woman in a car accident. By now, Danny was losing all control of his feelings of anger, revenge and hate. At six feet two inches, Danny Rowling was a massive, powerful man. From the late 1970s to 1990s, Rowling turned to crime big time, starting with thefts. Then he bumped it up to a series of armed robberies. He was well known to the police by that time and was in and out of the criminal justice systems in Louisiana, Mississippi, Georgia and Alabama. Danny broke out of prison several times. He tried to find work. He was fired by his employers as Danny's behavior showed that he was not normal. This was the time that the bodies of three victims were found in Shreveport. 24-year-old Julie Grissom, her father Tom Grissom and her nephew 8-year-old Sean. Later, it was found that these murders had been committed by Danny. When Danny Rowling broke out of jail in May 1990, he shot his 58-year-old father twice. And though the old man survived, he had lost an eye and an ear. Danny was totally out of control by this time. He then changed his identity with papers he had stolen after breaking into someone's house. He fled Shreveport and took a bus to Sarasota, Florida to start a new life as Michael Kennedy Jr. in late July of 1990. One would hope he would have been able to turn his life around, get help, as he had a new identity and new hope. However, his desperation and his rage worsened to an unbelievable level of madness. On August 24, 1990, Jenny started stalking two young women and followed the two university students home and broke in. He murdered Sonia Larson and Christina Paul, both incoming freshmen at the University of Florida in Gainesville. Thus, Danny began the streak of Gainesville Ripper, terrorizing the entire area. Rowling had covered both of the young women's mouths with duct tape before he bound their hands. He forced one young woman to perform a sexual act on him before he raped, stabbed and killed her. He returned to Sonia's dead body and raped her again. Rowling went so far as to cut off the girl's nipples and to keep one as a grisly trophy of his actions. The next day, Rowling killed Krista Hoyt in much the same fashion. He broke into her home and after he raped her, he removed her nipples and placed them beside her. Rowling cut off her head and sat her upright on the edge of her bed. He placed her head on a bookshelf. Just imagine the terror caused by the news of the murders which spread across the university. Authorities were working very hard to catch the murderer. Students slept in groups. One group slept while the other was awake, watching the doors and the windows. Everyone was taking every precaution possible. However, 
the gains will repair, kill one more time. On August 27, rolling attack Tracy Pauls and Manuel Taboda, both 23. He killed Taboda while he slept. Then he killed Tracy. Thought his feel, rolling had not mutilated these bodies because he may have been interrupted. He seemed to have left in a hurry. These murders all occurred less than two miles from each other around the University of Florida. Don't these photos of the victims break your heart? The university decided to cancel classes for a week while the students carried baseball bats with them everywhere they went and no one went out alone during the day or night. By the end of August, thousands of students had left the campus and around 700 never came back. Obviously, they feared for their lives. Remember the abusive father, James Rowling, the monster? Well, guys, he was a 20-year veteran cop of the Shreveport Police Department and had not only taught his son how to take abuse and how to become a demon all of his life, but he had also taught Danny how to cover his Police couldn't find enough evidence at crime scenes to implicate Danny Rowling. He had covered all tracks. Instead of leaving the duct tape on his dead bodies, Danny disposed of them in dumpsters to get rid of any fingerprints. Danny had also used cleaning solvents on the dead bodies to remove any traces of semen. Some of the female bodies were left in sexually suggestive positions which offered authorities a clue into the killer's method. The Gaines Bill Ripper continued his crime spree, stealing from homes and gas stations until he was finally caught in Okla after a high-speed chase. He was wanted for the robbery of a Winn-Dixie as authorities still did not know that he was the Gainesville Ripper. That was on September 8th, two weeks after the murders. The triple murder in Shreveport of Julie Grissom, her father and nephew, gave the police the clues pointing to Danny as the killer. Grissom's corpse was left in a sexual position after also being stabbed to death. Danny Rowling's DNA was similar enough to the DNA left on the Gainesville murder scenes to charge him with murder. Rowling confessed to being the Gainesville Ripper. Prosecutors found enough evidence to convict him and he was subsequently executed on October 25, 2006 in Florida. A total of 47 people witnessed the execution of the Gaines Bill Ripper, which was double the capacity of the Vivian. Rowling's last meal consisted of a lobster tail served with drawn butter, butterfly shrimp with cocktail sauce, a baked potato with sour cream and butter, strawberry cheesecake and sweet tea. On his deathbed, 52-year-old Danny sang a hymn-type song that rambled on for about five verses. I told you before, guys, that as a kid, Danny had turned to music to get his mind away from the intense abuse of his cruel, maniacal father. Danny seemed to have called on the tunes of his childhood to find peace before his execution. Oh, and before you go, I want you to know that Kevin Williamson, who was an aspiring writer in the 1990s, used Danny's case to create a screenplay for a horror movie which revolved around the murders of college students and the media frenzy that ensued. That screenplay turned into the 1996 cult classics. Scream.
Thank you guys. See you again soon.